I give a warm welcome for Mr. Jason Wheeler. You know who one of my favorite Christians is? You know who I love in the NFL? Tim Tebow. He's my favorite. Yeah. A lot of love in the house for Tim Tebow. Because he plays football. <laughs> Somewhat. He's a shitty... He's a, if you don't know who he is, he's a professional quarterback on a professional team called the New York Jets. And he's a Christian man. And as a Christian man, Tim Tebow does not have sex with women. And I love that. That is awesome. That is a beautiful thing. Because there are a lot of women that want to have sex with Tim Tebow and he won't do it. That's awesome. He goes on dates with girls and at the end of the night, they get nothing but a little hug and a peck on the cheek. Tim Tebow was like payback for every dude that thought he was going to get laid at the end of a date. <laughs> He's going around giving girls the equivalent of blue balls or whatever that is, whatever you have, like a purple clit or azure labia or whatever. Part of you gets swollen and frustrated when you get to the end of the night and you don't get fucking laid. That's what he's doing to you. I love thinking about that, that he's on a date with some girl. She's got to sit there for three hours of horrendous conversation with him, listen to him talk about fucking peewee football or some other horrible fucking topic. You ever heard him talk to? He's like a seven-year-old excitable kid the day before his birthday. He's like constantly taking like humongous breaths before every sentence. And they're going to play football. And we're going to win football. I'm going to play football. I play football. I play football. He's just taking in enough oxygen to try to get enough into this so he can cram nouns and verbs together to form sentences as he stuffs them around the words Jesus and excited. <laughs> and then the night she's just driving home just like fucking punching the steering wheel like I had to sit through that shit fucking angry as her vagina is just like radiating heat and glowing like E.T.'s heart light. <laughs> fucking welcome to the party ladies. Now you know how we feel. Uh, I had to read the Bible a lot lately to try to get ready for this so I could learn some things. <laughs> Which you think would suck, but actually if you're going to read the Bible in this in San Francisco, it's actually pretty cool because no one on Bart will fuck with you. Because <laughs> like, if you have a Bible in your hand on the Bart, you're pretty much, they, they think you're carrying like a folder full of crazy for the most part. Like, no one will talk to you whatsoever. Like, if they have the choice to sit down next to you or the homeless guy jacking off, they're going to sit next to the homeless dude jacking off. Like, I'm fucking... We're rather get hit with fucking cum than crazy. Was what I'm right now. <laughs> Plus, that's the thing about, about religion, Christianity specifically, is like, they can always answer the easy questions. They can't answer the hard ones. Like, when you talk about heaven and hell, there's a, you know, they open the gates to hell to let people take a peek every now and again, because that's universal. We can all tell you what hell is. Hell is burning of flesh and ripping and tearing. It's pain and suffering. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to go through that. But what's heaven? That's kind of an ab abstract concept. Nobody can really tell you what it is. It's like, oh, you know, when you're in heaven, you're going to spend eternity with your family. I fucking moved 2,000 miles around to see my family. I dread the idea of spending the holidays with my family. You're going to tell me I'm fucking spending eternity with them? No, thank you. I was talking to a priest one time. He was like, you know what heaven is? I'll tell you. Heaven is just everything that you love down here on earth. It's just up there. It's multiplied by a million. <laughs> That's an interesting concept there, Padre, because a lot of the stuff that I love here down on earth are the same reasons I'm not supposed to make it up into heaven, so how, how is that at all possible? How is it down here that blowjob is a sin, but up there is my eternal reward? I'm not sure that I trust your theory here. I'm just going to get blowjobs now. People actually do quite, that's the thing though, like, yeah, I can't say that all Christians don't question the Bible. Like, there are some people that have, you know, there are biblical scholars that, that question the fact that Adam and Eve actually were tempted by an apple. They actually believe that because of the, the, the location of where the, they believe Eden to be, that it was actually a pomegranate. And I was like, wow, that's pretty interesting. Like, you heard that story and the thing that you questioned was whether or not it was a fucking apple. <laughs> Like, the, the talking snake never ended in the equation whatsoever. You're like, well, obviously, apples weren't indigenous to the area of Mesopotamia where we believe the Eden was. But fucking snakes that don't have lips or vocal cords, like, that one just right over the head. Like, you're like, ah, yeah, talk to him. Of course he talked to him. You know, there's some jackass, too, that would have, like, some kind of, like, nonsensical argument. He was like, well, of course the snake talked to him. What you can do? You sign language? Snakes don't have hands. You know how stupid you sound right now? I'm a snake. This is a snake talk to someone. Was it a rattlesnake? Like, that's the only thing I could think where Adam and Eve were like, oh, my God, he's, he's curling around that, 
that pomegranate or some sort of fruit tree there. And he's, he, I, does he want us to eat that? I don't know. Do you want us to eat those things? Rattle once for yes and twice for no. That's like eight. I don't know what does that mean. Is that like eight yeses? You're like, yes, 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 eat it. Or is it like four? No, no, don't eat it. It's very confusing to me. Plus, too, like when, when Adam and Eve did eat the fruit, whatever it may have been, like they actually, the thing that they realized, I thought it was amazing that they were nude. They realized they were nude and they hid, and God got angry at them for that. Like, how you get angry for somebody for doing that? I've woken up a lot of times completely nude, and I had no fucking idea how I got that way. That shit fucks you up. Like, trust me. It messes with your head. And if I woke up that way in a jungle, trust me, I'm getting behind a bush till I figure out who the fuck did that to me. So we think is it's, it's, it's toxic. Like, you don't even have to go far to San Francisco to realize, like, how bad homosexual people have it with the hatred. Like, you, I went to this town recently right around here called Pleasanton. By the way, <laughs> most unpleasant place I've ever been in my entire life. It's horrible strip malls and fast food restaurants and people that hate you for being different. <laughs> they started, there were these guys that started yelling at this gay guy, the guy that they thought we was gay. And they were like, what are you, fucking faggot? You just come out of fucking queer or something, huh? Maybe I should just pull my dick out and shove you right in your faggot mouth. How'd you like that? They started yelling all these really aggressive gay things at him. Like, maybe I should just bend you over this pool table, fuck you right in your faggot ass. How'd you like that, faggot? I was like, I don't know. Kind of sounds sort of like he'd like it to me. I don't know if you've hung out with a lot of gay dudes, but those are a couple of things they tend to enjoy. Don't know why you're being so aggressive about it, you know? You just sweeten the deal up a little bit, you know? You catch, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. That's all I'm saying if you want to get with that. It's like, I didn't understand what's going on. I was like, why well, don't I get it? Are you threatening him or hitting on him right now? What is happening? What are you not saying to him? Like, oh, you'd probably love it if I took you on a date too, wouldn't you, fucking queer? Yeah, you'd love that shit if I took you to some fancy-ass restaurant and held the door open while your muscular, sinewy ass walked through. You'd love that, wouldn't you, you goddamn queer? Yeah. If I sat there at the dinner table with you and stared over the candlelight in your piercing blue faggot eyes while I sipped a glass of Shiraz or whatever gay drink it is you drink up there. You'd love that shit, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd be on some kind of cloud nine or whatever kind of gay cloud it is you have up there in your upper queer sphere, like a gay cloud 69, whatever it is, that fucking cloud that rings down homosexuality all over me every night in my dreams. You'd love that, wouldn't you? you got that right there. And you'd love it if we split the bill, but you'd love it even more if I paid, wouldn't you? You'd love it if I paid for dinner. You know what, maybe I won't even ask you. Maybe I'll just slip the waiter my credit card when you're not looking. When he comes back, you'll be like, I thought we were going Dutch. I'll be like, wrong! This one's on me, faggot! <laughs> you guys, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. Yeah. Welcome, to Welcome back, JC, to the stage. And have a good night. Keep it going for Jason Wheeler. Yeah.